study finds viruses form clusters to spread illness. A study published in Cell Host and Microbe found that different stomach viruses tend to be more contagious when the virus particles cluster together. Stomach viruses such as norovirus and rotavirus cluster together to form packs of up to 40 viruses. The virus clusters, called vesicles, are then covered in a protective membrane. The virus inside the clusters are also quick to replicate inside the membrane to form more virus particles. According to a study, the membrane protects the virus clusters from being noticed by the immune system. As the vesicles pass through the immune system and into the intestine, it quickly separates and infects one single cell with multiple viruses. In the study, scientists found that mice infected with clustered viruses became more ill compared to those that were infected with a single virus. The researchers noted as there are currently no vaccines to treat the vesicles, treatments to target the clusters instead of individual virus particles would need to be developed. More about viruses Here's how these annoying little critters make you sick. According to Scientific American, mosquitoes are one of the deadliest animals in the world to humans. The diseases they transmit kill hundreds of thousands of people each year. Here's how they transmit viruses and disease to people. Female mosquitoes only bite people when they require blood to feed their eggs. They use six needle-like parts that scientists refer to as stylets to suck blood. The maxillae on mosquitoes are equipped with saw-like teeth to cut through skin. The mandibles hold tissue apart while the labrum digs underneath the skin in search of blood to extract. The hypopharynx injects saliva into blood vessels and delivers chemicals to keep the blood flowing. Mosquito saliva makes blood vessels dilate, blocks an immune response, and lubricates the proboscis. This results in itchy welts and can also transfer dangerous viruses such as Zika and the West Nile virus. Texas, Colorado, Utah, Ohio, and Indiana have all been experiencing outbreaks of the West Nile virus. Meanwhile, the number of mosquitoes carrying the virus seem to be growing as well. About 1 in 150 people who are infected with the West Nile virus develop severe illness that affects the central nervous system. Of these people, about 1 in 10 die. So how do we combat this problem? Some solutions are to stay away from standing water sources, use mosquito larvicide, and to treat your yards with mosquito spray, or just to live your life in a bubble suit. Global warming could unleash viruses and permafrost. Scientists warn that climate change is melting permafrost soils, which may lead to the release of ancient viruses and bacteria. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil. It is a good preserver for microbes and viruses because of low temperatures and the lack of oxygen. As temperatures in the Arctic Circle rise, the permafrost melts, which may lead to the release of trapped viruses. Layers of permafrost could also be exposed by mining and drilling operations. Meanwhile, bacteria that can form spores are able to survive longer compared to bacteria that do not form spores. In August 2016, more than 20 people were reportedly infected by the anthrax virus that was released by thawed permafrost in the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. Flesh-eating virus plagues Australia. Doctors are scrambling to figure out how cases of a nasty skin-eating disease are on the rise down under. Citing experts, the BBC reports Australian cases of Beruli ulcer have increased 400% since 2014. And worryingly, medical experts do not know how to explain or stop its spread. The disease can cut to the bone, spreading toxins that eradicate skin, blood vessels, and fat. This is what causes the ulcer to form. The World Health Organization says they don't know how it spreads or how to stop it. Mycobacterium ulcerans, the bacteria in the disease, comes from the same family as leprosy and tuberculosis. Its origin is unknown, but doctors writing in the Medical Journal of Australia speculate it may come from the environment, soil, or it could even be carried by mosquitoes. The infection is more common in Africa, but cases have been on the rise in Victoria, Australia since 2013. The World Health Organization says early detection and antibiotic treatment are key to dealing with Beruli ulcer. The disease is commonly treated with a different combination of antibiotics and, where necessary, surgical techniques such as skin grafting. The BBC reports health authorities have spent more than 750,000 US dollars combating the disease and raising awareness of it. But doctors writing in the Aussie Medical Journal are calling on Australia to do more, asking officials to immediately fund research into combating the disease. Beating brain cancer with polio. A new experimental treatment is using a modified version of a once-dreaded virus to fight an even deadlier disease. 
Duke University researchers removed genetic code from the polio virus and replaced it with DNA from the rhinovirus, which causes a common cold. The modified virus is injected directly into the tumors of glioplastoma patients through a catheter. Instead of replicating itself, it attaches to receptors on the surface of the cancer cells, infecting them and prompting the body's immune system to attack. Of the 61 glioplastoma patients treated using the re-engineered virus, 21% are still alive three years later, compared to only 4% for those who underwent conventional treatment. The experimental treatment, like many immunotherapies, had varied, sometimes dramatic effects on the subjects. Scientists are still figuring out how to get the virus to produce the same exact results in different people, but are confident that it can be done. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus has infected at least three people in South Korea. A disease with a fatality rate of 30 to 40 percent has infected three people in South Korea after one man was diagnosed with the virus after a trip to Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. South Korean officials on Thursday confirmed the country's third case of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also known as MERS. The MERS virus, a SARS-like respiratory virus, may have originated in bats. Both bats and camels are thought to be carriers of the virus. Humans may pick up the virus by inhaling particles in the air or through self-inoculation. Once inside the body, MERS targets cells in the lungs. Enzyme receptors called DPP-4, located on cells deep in the lungs, are thought to act as virus receptors. The receptors are located in 20 percent of the lung's epithelial cells. Once the receptors and the virus bind, MERS fuses with the host cell membrane and enters the cell. The virus has an incubation period of up to 14 days. Bats, various primates, and many domestic animals have the same enzymes in their lungs, which means that the virus could easily jump between different mammals. A South Korean man diagnosed with the disease after returning from a trip to the Middle East passed the disease on to his wife and another patient. 64 others have been quarantined. The MERS virus does not transmit easily between humans, and there are existing uncertainties about how it's actually transmitted between humans. There is no cure for the virus yet.